welcome back to the Seriously Serious Show. I'm your host, Jay Pitty, and we're here with Kenzie. And it's awesome. Hey guys. But I know that you guys aren't really here for us anymore because we got OBB here with us. And uh, they, are, <laughs> they are with us on Skype. And they are going to be talking with We got Zach, Nick, and Jacob with us. And so, how are you guys doing today? We're good. 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 Yeah. Glad to be here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, what's been going on with you guys the last couple of months? What kind of music have you been pushing? What, what's been sort of going on with you in your world? We've been uh, just trying to tour as much as we can, go around, see as many of our fans as we possibly can. We've just been really busy playing a lot of shows. We've been um, doing a radio tour, which has been awesome getting to go around. We have a new song on radio. It's actually our first single ever called Come On Home. So it's been cool to be able, for the first time ever, be able to go around to radio stations and um, be able to talk about a single that we have on radio. So that's been it's been a really exciting past couple of months. Oh, that's that's cool. Um, the question I have for you first, Zach, is uh, yeah. about your yellow mohawk. Uh, can you talk <laughs> about how it inspired the Come On Home and all that? Yes. Well. Uh, a few years ago, uh, our family was in the process of looking for a new home church. And um, kind of during that time, I was trying something kind of crazy with my hair. I decided to get a mohawk. And uh, I tried to dye it blonde. It didn't work out so well. It ended up coming out like this bright yellow color. And uh, and it was it was huge. I mean, like, I don't even know if I have enough room here on the camera to show how, <laughs> how big it got. But I mean, it was this huge mohawk. And um, it... While we were kind of like looking for a new home church, we would walk into churches and people would just kind of like stare at me with this mohawk that I had on my head. Yeah, and and I know, I mean, at sometimes it was a bit crazy, but the thing that really uh, kind of got to me and to all of us was the fact that instead of people coming up and like welcoming us into the church or even really talking to us, people would just kind of stare and like. Uh, we really felt like judged because of my hairstyle at that time. And, uh, you know, it, it really made us realize that as the hands and feet of Christ, we should be the first ones accepting people in to, um, you know, because that's what Jesus Christ does for each and every one of us. It doesn't matter, you know, what your hair looks like or, or you know, mistakes that you've made in your life or, you know, anything that happens, God accepts every single one of us. And just like the story of the prodigal son, I mean, no matter how far away you run, when you come back to God, he will run to you with open arms to embrace you and welcome you home. Yeah. So that's that's really cool. I, I love the the imagery of it. It's, you had the mohawk on, but there's so many times that there's stuff inside that us as Christians don't accept others, and and uh, that's a great great point. And uh, uh, thanks for sharing that story. Um, yeah, definitely. Also, what what it sort of you had a little fear of actually being on stage in front of a, a bunch of people. How how do you overcome that? What's uh, been that process like? <laughs> well, yeah, when we. Uh... When we first started getting into the whole music scene and everything, I was absolutely terrified of singing in front of people. Really? Um, I just like, I could not do it if, uh, I was part of the choir at our church and um, they would like, if I was anywhere near a mic, I would just like, I would like just freeze up and I would start whispering and like not even singing at all. Or, you know, if there was like a mic around me, I'd be like looking the other way or like looking down or holding the mic as far away from my mouth as possible. Um, and, you know, for a while it was like, it was, it was this really tough thing. Cause I mean, I just couldn't sing like yeah. in front of anybody and I just didn't want to do it. And um, one day uh, we were uh, decided to do something. To, we decided to do a battle of the bands together that, um, and so like we got involved in that and uh, as soon as I got up on stage, I just started praying. I was just like, God, I'm up on stage right now. I have to <laughs> sing. I'm the one that's singing tonight. I was like, God, you know, please help me with this because I can't do it right now. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I stepped up to the microphone and like I uh, and I put my mouth to the microphone, like God just like spoke to me and he said, and he said, Zach, you know, he said, sing for me. I gave you this voice. He said, just sing for me. And it doesn't matter, you know, even if you make mistakes tonight, he's like, I love you. And you know, and that's, and that's what matters. And next thing I knew, I just started singing and now my brothers can't stop me from singing. I'm like, <laughs> I walk around in the stores and I'm like singing. They're like, Zach, we need to stop. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, the power of prayer even went on beyond just that uh, battle of the bands. That's awesome. So, but speaking of battle of the bands, 
Nick, what, what was that like the first time playing? And I heard your father had some craziness to be a part of that. So what was it like for the first time playing, Nick? Um, well, it was, it was kind of scary. I mean, I didn't have a fear of playing in public like Zach did or performing, but um, I, he, the part he didn't mention was when he said we chose to do a battle of the bands, we didn't actually choose to do a battle of the bands. Our dad kind of forced it upon us. He's, nice. We were, we were actually taking Korean lessons. We were all going to learn how to speak Korean. Okay. And um, our dad came to pick us up from Korean lessons one day and he was like, hey guys, how would y'all, would y'all be interested in playing in a battle of the bands like you three together? We had never really played as a band together. And we were like, yeah, that sounds like fun. We could do that. And he was like, well, good, because I signed you up for one, and it's tonight. And we were like, what? So we had to, <laughs> we and we had a 30-minute set. A lot of times people ask, they're like, oh, so y'all had to, like, learn a song and play it? We're like, no, we had to learn, like, six songs <laughs> and play them. And we, we had to sell 20 tickets to, like, qualify. We'd already paid $50 to get in, but we had to sell 20 tickets. So I had to go around and sucker all our poor neighbors into buying tickets nice. from me. Our next door neighbor bought like 10 tickets for himself and he didn't even come, but he just did it to help me out. <laughs> exactly. he, he was so young and cute looking. I was 12 time. years old. So yeah. I was a little 12 year old kid and they felt bad for me. So, but well, yeah, then, I mean, we sold the 20, I sold the 20 tickets in like 10 minutes. And then I came back, we went, played the battle of the bands. We, I mean, we were all, we were excited and nervous. I mean, it was the first time we'd ever played in front of a crowd. And, it wasn't like a huge crowd. There were probably maybe, I don't know, a hundred people there. But I mean, we had a blast and it was just like, after we did it, we we all like just knew, like we were talking to each other and we we're like, we didn't even win. We came in second place, but we were like, this is what we need to do with like, this is what we feel like God's calling us to do. And ever since then, we've just been playing as many shows as we possibly can. And we've been booking, like, we just want to play anywhere we can. If somebody's like, hey, I want you to come out to New Mexico to play this show, it's like, hey, if we can find a way to get there, we're gonna come there, we're gonna play, it doesn't matter, we'll go, I mean, we wanna go anywhere and play. That's uh, that's amazing how uh, God's worked in that process, even even though your father put you in a tough situation, I'm glad it worked out for you. I'm glad, yeah. I wish you would've won first place, but uh, it looks like uh, you started the, the journey at a great, great time. Uh, and so we go from Battle of the Bands, and so Jacob, I wanna ask you a question about now you are at like Winter Jam with artists like Toby Mac, new, uh, new Song, just like what have you gained from being around people like that uh, in your own like uh, journey and just in your own walk spiritually and then also musically? How's that helped you and, and maybe what have been some of your influences or do you guys like being your own kind of thing? Yeah, well, um, definitely it was uh, such a great experience being a part of that tour like with these incredible artists that we all know and love and um but like i mean ever since i was little i was listening to toby mac and uh, <laughs> you know growing up with matthew west music and it's like you know so cool to now be on a tour yeah with with these guys that i've looked up to my whole life and um just being able to see them like backstage day in and day out and they're like just as real um like you know what they say on stage is exactly what they live backstage and um, so that was like so cool to me to be like, you know, these guys are so real and they're so on fire for God. Like it's not just, you know, a big show. I mean, like Toby Mac puts on an incredible show. Oh yeah. But it's like, you know, he's the real deal. Like even backstage, I mean, he's just such a humble guy and he like, he cares so much. Like even for us, like kind of one of the newer bands, um, he came out and he watched our show and we were like, um, we were asking him if he had any tips for us and he like gave us a few tips and pointers and we were like that's so cool that Toby Mac you know cares enough to come out and watch our show and like kind of help us yeah that's awesome and, and I, I gotta ask like what are some of the tips that he would maybe say or what's some of the tips to maybe help you keep you spiritually you know uh, grounded balanced what, what were maybe some of the stuff that you've really taken away from that yeah well um, like on the spiritual side um, like I heard from a lot of the guys because this was our first like major tour like bus tour um so it's like every night around two or three um we'd get in our bunk and you know kind of like after the whole day and go to bed and it's like all day you're kind of busy and so um a lot of times it's easy to forget about your quiet time or like just kind of get caught up in the rest of the stuff you're doing throughout the day and um not even you know, stop and do your quiet time or stop to pray. And um, 
So I heard from a lot of the different artists that like before they would even get out of their bunk, um, they would do their quiet time there in their bunk because it's like quiet, you uh, you know, it's you have a curtain, so it's um, like all by yourself. Like it's hard to get a, get away from people whenever every single day you're with thousands and thousands of people. But um, so that was like a really good tip just to like, you know, no matter what you're doing, you can always make time and find a place to um, get along with God. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And, uh, and I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here at the Seriously Serious Show and Remedy Live. Uh, we just want to well, thank you so much for being here. But I also want to give you guys the opportunity to let our audience know where they can find you, uh, your Facebook, Twitter, all that, so people can get on. Because we've had in our chats like, I love OBB. And so <laughs> where can they follow you? Where can they fi find you? Maybe uh, uh, what are some upcoming dates? Uh, I'll let you uh, sort of go from there. Well, um, I mean, we have all social media. Our Facebook is just OBB, you search OBB or OBB official. And then our Twitter is OBB underscore music. Our Instagram is OBB underscore music. And, uh, but you can find it all at obbmusic.com. It has a link to all our social media. And um, yeah, you can find all our tour dates there. We're, Friday, we're going to where in Texas? Texas. Oh, I don't know where. where. Sulphur, <laughs> Sulphur Springs, Texas. So nice. Out near there. Come yeah, on. Come by, say hey. Yeah. Uh, there you go. There you go. So uh, once again, thank you. We're going to be playing your song, Come On Home, here in the next music bed. Uh, and so hopefully if uh, you're online, if you're watching us, you'll be able to hear them. Uh, uh, the second song uh, after uh, Spencer Kane that you were going to be playing their song. So make sure you listen to that. Once again, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. The best of luck. May God bless you. We'll be praying for you. And uh, may God just continue to do radical things through your music and uh, and through uh, to your fans and uh, in, in your guys' lives. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thank you guys for having us. Uh, yeah. no, no problem, no problem. You guys have a great one. That was OBB. You can catch them, like they said, on their website where they, you can follow their Twitter, their Facebook, and everything. Thanks again, guys. And right now, we're going to play Spencer Kane. And then OBB's song, uh, Come On Home, is next. <laughs>